Welcome to Retire Hour, the weekly show discussing income planning, investing, tax planning, estate planning, and Medicare. Complete retirement education. Hear from our financial advisors, CPA, estate planning attorney, and Medicare advisor every week. This is Retire Hour. Welcome into Retire Hour, the weekly show that keeps you up to date on the ever-changing landscape that is retirement. I'm Larry Clefcorn filling in for Matt this week, and uh, we've got a full show for you. Stay tuned for the back half of the episode where we will talk to Trey Bossa about Old Aunt Irma. Notice, folks, the those of you that listen regularly, that that's one that comes up uh, fairly often. Then we'll turn to Doug Shouter and Kansas City to discuss corporate stocks held in trusts, and we'll also be answering a listener question about old 401ks. You don't want to miss that. But with me right now, I have Jonathan McCoy, Financial Advisor, Market Advisory Group, Kansas City. How you doing, Jonathan? Not too bad, Larry. It's uh, always a pleasure to be here each week and, you know, discussing a lot of the interesting things we have going on, both economically and coming up on election season for this year. So a lot of challenges lie ahead, and, and it's all a matter of how we get people prepared for it. That's right. Getting them prepared for it is the key. Um, so talk to me. I know you have uh, s- some uh, comments and, and some some thoughts on what's kind of going on in the economy and the, how that affects the market. Yeah, you know, it, it feels like the market is <clears throat> is sort of keeping this very close pulse on what the Federal Reserve banks are going to be doing over the next se- several months with interest rates. And, you know, there's the downstream impacts and what's that, what's that going to do with the housing market that already has really pretty co- tight constraints in terms of supply and demand, housing prices reaching record highs, and consumer debt reaching all-time highs. An alleviation of those higher interest rates may help the economy in some ways, but it may hurt in other ways. And one of the interesting articles that I was reading just this week indicated that the economy has probably been slowing and weakening for a longer period of time than most people recognize. There's There are revisions to these jobs reports that, that are coming out that, you know, these revisions are usually three to six months behind when the numbers are actually released. So. The most updated revisions are looking back to the year ending March. So from March 23 to March of 24, there's an expectation there could be somewhere between a 400,000 to a million job reduction in what were the originally reported numbers in terms of how strong the economy was. Now, keep in mind, the Federal Reserve is keeping an eye on those numbers as well that had they had used some of those strong jobs numbers to warrant the fact that they were keeping interest rates relatively high for a longer period of time. And you think about the fact that some people are already insinuating that maybe the Federal Reserve Bank should have or could have been lowering rates earlier than uh, than they have. And when you start to see some of these indicators that the economy was maybe weakening at a faster pace than otherwise expected, it, it just gives us that indication that maybe they're a little more behind the eight ball, a little bit more catch up to do, that interest rates may be dropping a little faster than some people expect. But when the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates, and you think about how the impacts that it has, especially in the housing market and the cost of keeping a roof over our heads, if interest rates drop, it automatically increases demand in the housing market. And it, it could alleviate some of the supply concerns because existing homeowners may be a little more willing to go out and go get that new mortgage, sell their existing home, which may help on supply. There's a lot left that is that is yet to be seen. And especially as we come up on election season, you know, the, these downward revisions in the in the economic strength of our country will have wide ranging impacts both on the markets and the you know the economic stability of the country and the individual financial major financial decisions like buying a home that a lot of people are faced with these days. And it really does take some time for all of this to come out and then be digested. Um, and talk to us a little bit about. Uh, the the market participants and why that affects you know some economic numbers affect uh, the market. Well, you, you think about the fact that you know the the economy in general and especially the stock market are are sort of feedback mechanisms on themselves. You know, fear breeds fear, greed be- breeds greed, and when things are going well, there's there's typically this fervor. And we look back to you know some of the statements that uh, 
leading economists were making at the end of the 1990s as we led into the end of the tech bubble that eventually burst and led into a significant recession in the early 2000s. Most people remember 2008, but there was another significant recession that was happening shortly after 9-11 back in the early 2000s as well, that there can be sort of this sense that the market is getting out a little bit over the tip of its skis in terms of being a little overheated, a little overpriced, I shouldn't say a little, but in some cases significantly overpriced. And part of the natural market cycle is those prices have to come down in order for investors to find good discounts and good sale prices on a lot of the stocks that they want to be investing in. At the prices that we've seen, I think we're seeing the beginning of the end of this people being willing to pay those higher than expected prices to continue investing in the market. And you look at it at the big institutional level, there are some larger institutions out there that are starting to maybe hold a little bit more cash on the sidelines, take a little bit of a wait and see approach as we get through the election season and waiting to see what the Federal Reserve is ultimately going to do. But we we look at it from the perspective of what impact does that have on our clients' portfolio values? You know, if, if large institutions are going to be holding more cash on the sidelines that could drive especially stock prices a little bit lower than where they are today, what are the things that investors can or maybe should be doing to help protect those assets? And from a retirement planning standpoint, there's an argue, argument to be made that you do need to be able to ride it out, at least on a portion of your money that you're not expecting to live on in the near term. But as the market goes through the downturn, most people cannot afford to be spending that money out of those investments that are losing value during that downturn. And that's a big part of the financial planning that we put together for our clients is making sure you have that game plan for these potential upcoming market downturns and a potential recession before it actually occurs. You know, the time to change your game plan is not when things are going terribly in the markets. At that point, it's typically too late and you're sort of forced to play that buy and hold strategy. And the the, the ultimate lesson to be learned is have a game plan and stick to it, because if you're forced to change that game plan at halftime, it, it usually may, it means that things are not going well and it's going to start having an impact on your lifestyle. And that game plan is something that the advisor and the client come up with together so that they're able to weather all of that. Sometimes we're faced with decisions or problems that just seem too big. We get paralyzed and end up doing nothing for weeks or months on end while we try and figure out what to do. It can help to have someone to talk to about these decisions. And when it comes to retirement, sometimes all it takes is a 15-minute phone call to find the right path to go down. If you'd like to set up that 15-minute introductory phone call, reach out right now at 833-MAG-REPORT. That's 833-MAG-REPORT. Or go over to our website, retirehour.com. There you can watch past episodes, submit a question, or schedule that 15-minute call with Market Advisory Group team. We'll stay tuned. When we come back, We'll be talking with financial advisor Julie Newton in Kansas City about a couple she's been working with. We'll be right back. Are you worried about your retirement? Do you have an entire team looking out for your investments, taxes, estate plans, and healthcare? At Market Advisory Group, we have professionals in all four areas available to give you the help you need for your future. Find out why our team approach can give you confidence in your plan moving forward with a free consultation. Call 833-MAG-PLAN. That's 833-M-A-G-P-L-A-N. Or visit marketadvisorygroup.com. Market Advisory Group, invested in you. Welcome back into Retire Hour. This segment, we have Julie Newton, financial advisor from Market Advisory Group, Kansas City. Julie, you have a client that we'll call Ned and Rita. What are Ned and Rita going through right now? So Ned and Rita um, are, as you know, very typical of the folks that we see, They came to visit with us um, because they recognized they had a pretty significant uh, pre-tax concern, large pre-tax account. And so they recognized that whole, you know, we've got a lot of tax implications. We need to do something about that. And as most of our listeners know, that's something that 
uh, market advisory group specializes in is getting those taxes taken care of, you know, all that tax planning and strategy. Um, but as Jonathan mentioned earlier, in, in that getting people prepared, a lot of times they aren't necessarily aware of what preparedness really means. So in um, Ned and Rita's case, um, they came in, they sat down, they shared their concerns. And as you know, we always start talking about their entire retirement situation, kind of focusing more on, you know, what each of them have hopes and dreams, what their concerns are. And interestingly, as so often is the case, Ned's concern, um, because he's 70, Rita's 64, and he's had some health issues. So his concern is making sure Rita is taken care of after he's gone. And so we were having this discussion and, um, you know, in in the middle of this entire thing, Rita just kind of says, well, you know, I want to hold hold everybody up here just for a minute. She said, my concern is not about whether I'm prepared necessarily in when Ned is gone. She's like, I'm more concerned about our grandson. So they have a grandson who um, had a, a brain injury some years ago, and he's going to need care uh, for the rest of his life. He does have a job. That job um, is not going to pay all of his living expenses. So Rita's focus is how do we make sure that we pass on a legacy to not just their children, but their grandchildren in this case, to make sure that specifically this grandson has everything that he needs. Yeah, and in situations like this, oftentimes they need a lot, and um, which is gonna require some help. And that is a crossover back into financial planning if you want your funds to have longevity. And um, um, what, now, tell us a little bit more about where you see this case going. Well, so one of the first things is that we do have to address the tax situation because um, if they pass anything directly onto that grandson um, on down the road, um, if he is, you know, has his earned income, he's going to be paying taxes. They just dumped a very large tax bomb onto him with pre-tax funds because he's a non-spouse. He has a limited amount of time to get that money out of the IRA. He inherits that kind of thing. So there are some very important special tax consequences. So we've got to do a lot of tax planning with Ned and Rita in the moment. But it's more than just that because we've got to bring in the estate planning piece. How is the best way to pass assets on to the grandson with special needs rather than just, oh, you know, again, here you go, here's your piece of the IRA. So it requires estate planning to make sure that legacy is passed on appropriately to leave the least amount of issues because, you know, there may be some benefits in terms of, um, you know, whether that's disability or what that looks like. So they have to make sure they don't cause more trouble passing that legacy on than what they're actually helping. Right. And, you know, it, it is almost unfathomable fathomable, uh, to think of helping the, this kind of a situation, these good people, without a full team. You know, it's so oftentimes you will bring in, you know, maybe the the attorney for the estate planning, but oftentimes the attorney says, you know what, that's a tax matter. And then that leads right into another entry into the room. So uh, I'm just glad that we have this here um, at Market Advisory Group, whether you are in Wichita or Kansas City that can be available to you. All right, so you know this person isn't alone. Every week, we see someone with a situation just like this, someone who thought the damage was already done, nothing could be done to fix it, only to be delighted to find out it could be fixed. We like to say everyone is unique 
but there are some common pitfalls and that people have to fall into. And at Market Advisory Group, we can get you out of it. it if you'd like to set up the 15-minute introductory phone call to see what you might be missing in your retirement plans, reach out right now, 833-MAG-REPORT. That's 833-MAG-REPORT. Or go over to our website, retirehour.com. There you can watch past episodes, submit a question, or schedule that 15-minute call with the Market Advisory Group team. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll be talking with Danny Goolsby to answer a listener question from someone out there just like you. We'll be right back. Are your health care prices going to change? Market Medicare Advisors can help you review any changes to your plan. We are determined to help make your Medicare as simple and understandable as possible. And you can schedule an appointment with one of us to review any changes or if there's a better plan out there for you. Call Market Medicare Advisors at 844-4-MEDI-HELP. That's 844-4-MEDI-HELP. Or visit MarketMedicareAdvisors.com. Welcome back into Retire Hour. If you have questions that you'd like for us to answer on air, just go to retirehour.com and click the button that says Submit Question. If we feature your question on air, we'll send you a piece of swag for your efforts. A tumbler, a hat, a little tape measure. We have a lot to choose from when you submit a question at retirehour.com. Now, right now, we have in studio, Danny Goolsby, Market Advisory Group, Wichita, to answer a question that was submitted. And this question comes from Brian B. Brian asks, what am I to do with a 401k tied up at a job where I no longer work? Danny. Well, we get this all the time, uh, talking with folks. Um, they may have a may have moved on from an employer, uh, or they may have taken uh, a laid off status. Uh, they may have taken off a sabbatical, what, whatever. They're no longer actively employed at the employer, and they want to know, you know, what's the best thing to do. And so that is a bigger picture question to ask because uh, part of that answer is encapsulated in what does Brian? Where, where is he at in life? Is he? Uh, what, how old is Brian? Because if he's a certain age, it's going to, he's going to have cer certain other unintended consequences if he were to use the money for, a, for other purposes than it was intended. So, if he was, for example, if he's under 59 and a half, Uncle Sam's going to have something to say about should he take that money out. So he, he really has three different options that we talk about with people when this question comes up. And when this com comes up, Uncle Sam, the IRS has created a, a special tax notice. It is a document that goes through and helps people walk through what are their options when they want to retire. And so let's just kind of go through those on a general basis today. Because uh, some of the things, again, Brian, I don't know your specifics, so, so mm -hmm. there's going to be some, uh, maybe some additional things that I may tell you if I knew more about your situation. But let's just talk about that in a general setting for the moment. So number one is you can leave it there as long as the employer will let you leave it there because there's sometimes employers will not let you leave it there for a right. period of time. And so they force you to take it out. But if the employer will let you, that's kind of you know the path of least resistance. I'm not sure that's the best idea, but it's the path of least resistance is, is if you can't leave it there. A lot of times with 401ks, though, they have, like anything in life, there are pros and there are cons. You know, with 401ks, sometimes there are limited investment choices you can choose. So wherever that retirement plan may be, whoever the custodian is for that retirement plan has gotten together with the, with the employer and said, this is the list of investments we're going to allow the, the client to invest in or the, the employee to invest in, whether it's you know a growth fund or a value fund or a balance fund or international or what have you. And it's kind of pretty generic stuff. I mean, you know, it's just pretty generic stuff. And most of, as I say, most of the time, they're pretty limited in scope. You may have 10 or 15 or 20 choices. On the other hand, 
if you had your money in a self-directed IRA instead of a self, uh, employer plan, that kind of opens up the investing world to you. So the buffet, you went from going to one particular, you know, let's say steaks and steaks and, and chops, you know, for a restaurant. You went you now you're going to a smorgasbord, if you will, <laughs> because you're able to eat eat from many different parts of the world, if you will. So the investing choices you have in an IRA are much better or much more more broad than you do in a four oh one K. 401ks, though, on the other hand, they have some protections that IRAs don't have. So one of the biggest things that IRAs have, they're governed by what's called ERISA. ERISA is a federal law that has to do with retirement plans. And the ERISA basically says that your the creditor protections offered to a 401k are significantly much higher than they are if you have a self-directed IRA. Now, I'm not getting into law because I'm not an attorney <laughs> and didn't play one on TV last night or any of that, but, uh, but usually creditor protections are better on the 401k. So if you think you're going to get sued, then you might want to consider keeping it in a 401k. So back to your choices, though. So you can leave it there like we talked about. You can roll it away. This is all in that special tax notice we talked about. Or you can cash out. So if you roll it away, again, that's where the... You're rolling it from that employer plan, which generically speaking, 401ks could be a, a, a employer plan, yeah. could be a 403b, mm -hmm. could be 457, for HR 10. Right. Uh, those are all employer-sponsored plans. And we even run across 401as. 401as, that's right. Yeah. That's exactly right in healthcare sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, there's the ESOPs and all, those, all these different mm -hmm. uh, acronyms that go for federal retirement plans through an employer. But then if you, if you roll it away to a self-directed IRA, like I said, you're going to get a bit, much bigger choice. Uh, and you want to do that on a non-taxable basis. And so this special tax notice talks about the consequences if you do it the wrong way. So they're going to give you a length of time to roll it over if you chose to. Um, if, you chose, if you took too much time, then they're going to penalize you. They also give you some time to think about it. So there's a cooling off period or a 30-day waiver that you can waive if you want to during this rolling over period, or you don't have to. So you can keep it there, you can roll it to an IRA, or you can cash out. So let's talk about the cashing out part. Usually when we're talking about traditional retirement plans, you're talking about monies that have never been taxed. And so if they've never been taxed, usually taking monies in that manner, in a, in a, a lump sum distribution, is not a, going to be an advantageous thing, specifically from a tax standpoint. Right. It's going to be too painful. You've never paid taxes on any of this money, if again, if it's in a traditional setting. So you want to make sure that you have a qualified tax person helping you make these decisions. Right. What's the impact on some of these going to be for you? Uh, you and I have seen this in the conference room all the time, and sometimes it's just it's different for different people. Right. Yeah. Situations are unique. That, that's something we say almost every every week. But um, you're so right to say that if you roll it to a um, a self-directed IRA, and I I oftentimes tell people that here's how to tell the difference. If it's a number, that's an employer plan basically, and then uh, if it's an IRA. I stands for individual, so it's no longer employer employer affiliated. And one of the things that I think is is extremely important is by doing so, by going to an IRA, if you're with the right advisor and you have the right team together, you can build in risk management. The 401ks, their only risk management is to go into a target fund, maybe a, a target fund. Uh, sometimes, unfortunately, it's just a uh, mar money market or stable value fund. Mm. So, N not a lot allowed for. It's almost like in a 401k, it's a set it and you get it. Uh, you'll have people show up at the employer a lot of times saying, "Hey." You know, uh, we're from the investing, we're from the, from the uh, retirement plan, we're from the custodian, whoever that may be. And once a year, we'll come in to the, to the employer, or once a year, you can, we set aside time for you to call us so we can help you with that. But most people, that, in my experience, don't, don't, pick them, don't take them up for that. 
uh, right. which means it's almost a set it and forget it, and then life happens. And mm -hmm. we, and so however you've invested, good or bad, you you just uh, you forget about it and you don't get the best out of it. Right. If you find yourself at a loss with what to do with your retirement, if you've been putting it off and putting it off because all of this stuff is just too complicated, don't put it off any longer. Sometimes all it takes is a 15 minutes to see what you might be missing in your retirement plans. And if you'd like to set up a 15 minute introductory phone call, reach out right now at 833-MAG-REPORT. That's 833-MAG-REPORT. Or go on over to our website at retirehour.com. There you can watch past episodes, submit a question, and or schedule a 15-minute phone call. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back with Trey Bossa. Do you find yourself at a loss for the complexities of retirement? Do topics like phantom income, required minimum distribution, and Medicaid spend down utterly confuse you? Market Advisory Group has free webinars for you to watch, including finances and investing, taxes, estate planning, Medicare, and more. Go to marketadvisorygroup.com to kickstart your retirement education. Market Advisory Group, invested in you. Financial advisory services offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor, not connected with or endorsed by the U.S. government or the federal Medicare program. Welcome back into Retire Hour. We just spent the last half hour talking with several of our financial advisors with Market Advisor Group. And at most investment firms, that'd be the end of it. We'd just go ahead and sign off. <laughs> <laughs> but we do things a little different here at Market Advisor Group. We know that retirement isn't just about the investments. We know that taxes play a big role in how long your money lasts. And estate planning can impact how much of your legacy gets passed to the next generation. That's why we take the back half of our show to discuss some of these aspects in retirement. With me in studio right now, I have Trey Bossa, health insurance agent with Market Medicare Advisors. Trey, talk to us about our favorite aunt. <laughs> Good old Aunt Irma. Yeah. Uh, we like to bring up Aunt Irma a lot because um, it's not directly associated with like your health care, with your Medicare, but it's those other factors that you were just talking about. The other factors that our firm focuses on that affects people's uh, premium payments on their health care. Um, one example I wanted to bring in was, and I, I would love to talk to people at 62, 63. Mm, yeah. Because at 65, somebody wants to turn wants to switch over to Medicare, and Irma might kick in. They will look at their tax return two years ago, how much they filed and how they filed, and all of a sudden, at 65, they're having to spend 60, 100, 300 extra dollars a month on their premium. And then if there's two people in the household, double it. The example I wanted to bring in today was uh, a 63 young woman coming yeah. into a workshop and uh after everything we had talked about she came up and said trey i think i have a problem okay let's talk about it my parents died recently and i inherited both of their iras well what's the rule with that uh 10 years yeah you have 10 years to empty those accounts now all of a sudden um, a single woman uh, approaching 65, her retirement, has to empty out two IRAs. And being single, the tax law is not all that favorable. It is not. So extending that to uh, Irma, and um, let me take a second and explain. Irma is the income-related monthly adjustment amount. That's kind of what we are, we're talking yeah. about today. It's how you file your taxes and how much you filed for two years ago is going to affect how much you pay for your Medicare Part B and Part D premiums. So back to the example, this woman had two IRAs that she has to empty out. Uh, she's in the midst of that. So as she's approaching retirement, she has to worry about 
how much she's taking out and how much she's going to have to pay in her Medicare premiums when she's approaching retirement. All of a sudden, uh, this year it's $174.70, but when she starts Medicare, that premium could be a little bit higher. And depending on how much she's taking out of those accounts and how much she's filing in her taxes, she's not going to pay that base premium. She's going to pay a little bit. She's going to pay $30, 60 $100 more every month. And that's going to impact out to $1,000 plus out of her own pocket just for Medicare premiums for filing a little bit more in, in a tax year. Right. You know, I, the first time, Trey, that uh, I had a, um, a client – uh, and, and I didn't know a lot about Medicare at that point, but I had a client that said, that called and was really disturbed. She said her social security, they lowered my social security. I'm not going to get as much this time as I, I, or this year as I have been getting, but what it actually turned out to be is it turned out to be Irma and it raised the price of or the deduction taken from Social Security yeah. out of uh, that Medic for that Medicare Part B is what it's uh, attacked, right? That's yeah, what and uh, that that's a whole other concept to, to talk about. When you're on Social Security and you're on Medicare, Part B is automatically deducted. Now, all of a sudden, you're 10 years into retirement. Uh, say this woman is 10 years into retirement, and she's still pulling... Um, from those IRA accounts to empty them. All of a sudden, her social security, uh, her social security monthly disbursement isn't as much as she thought. They are taking more and more out of there because of Aunt Irma. Those are automatically taken out of social security. Uh, it's right. just a way that they pay Part B without you know having to hound you for a bill or something. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, so often um, the people that we do catch in this age group, pre-Medicare age group that you're talking about, we're able to warn them up front. And they're, they're always so appreciative of it because they realize that if they'd gone $1 over, you know, that Irma lowest limit, um, that it could truly affect them and be a big surprise that you can't do anything about. <laughs> <laughs> no. And un unfortunately, some people, they keep paying that higher rate because they don't know how to ask the government to lower it. Now, it's not always going to be um, an automatic, it's, it's not going to be an automatic, uh, what is that, rating down. You have to fill out some forms. You have to request a lower premium. And they're going to take a look at your tax return two years ago, how much you filed and how you filed. And then they will determine, okay, you don't have to pay this amount anymore. We'll knock you down for the year. And that catches people by surprise. Oh, they didn't automatically knock me down. I have to request them right. to, uh, to pay less. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't they know? They have my tax return. They have my info. Well, while Irma is punitive, so to speak, and while Irma is um, a real, uh, it's a pain. To these people it is true pain to them it is not intended to be okay you've tripped it and now it's going to be this for the rest of your life like you said as soon as their income comes down and one of the things trey that i find most often is that people got into irma because they sold some property oh and the capital gains thing took them you know, too far. And it, and that single status is um, quite literally half the threshold of married filed jointly. So you have half as much to work with in, in that threshold. So all of a sudden that, that, that sale of a property goes way further mm -hmm. in right. that single status. Right. It's insane. Yeah. Um, you know, these are some of the things that we run into at Market Advisory Group. And that's why we've developed this team. Um, and if you find yourself at a loss for what, you, what to do for your retirement, if you've been putting it off, putting it off because all this stuff is just too complicated, don't put it off any longer. Sometimes all it takes is a 15 minutes to see what you might be missing in your retirement plans. Uh, and if you'd like to set up one of these 15-minute introductory phone calls, reach out right now, 
833 MAG Report. That's 833 MAG Report. Or you can go over to our website, retirehour.com. There you can watch past episodes, submit a question, or schedule that 15 minute call with the Market Advisory Group team. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll be talking with Doug Shouter from Eidelman Law Firm in Kansas City about LLCs and closely held corporation stock in trusts. We'll be right back. Managing assets, documents, or crucial decisions for yourself or a family member is no simple task. Estate planning is your legacy, and nobody knows this better than Eidelman Law Firm. In estate planning, meeting with your attorney, accountant, and financial advisor helps you prepare for your life and legacy. When you put together an estate plan, you will be prepared for the present and future. This should not be delayed. Call 1-800-4-ESTATE or visit us online at EidelmanLawFirm.com. Eidelman Law Firm. Live for today. Plan for tomorrow. Welcome back into Retire Hour. In this segment every week, we focus on estate planning. It's a part of life that most people ignore for too long because it requires you to think about your own end. But it's important to get your estate plan in place sooner rather than later because you never know when your last day will be. Wow, I'm sounds like I'm a real downer right now, but... No, these are important um, uh, matters. So with us, we have Doug Shouter from Eidelman Law Firm, Kansas City. Doug, you were telling me about uh, a particular case that you have, and um, your expertise helps a great deal with it. Yeah, well, and and Larry, there's a a lot of the Folks that are listening out there today, probably driving around in their work trucks on their way to to a job or something like that, that have what's usually like a small small business, a LLC or a C corp or an S corp, uh, but just closely held, not a publicly traded company or even like a partnership or something like that. And a lot of times when these businesses get set up, the attorney or whoever that's helping them sometimes they just do it themselves they just do the very basic documents on the on the business plan and don't consider what happens if something happens to them if they pass away what happens to their business and i've had a, a number of clients over the years some that i've worked with in advance to to take care of these kind of issues and some that i've seen come through with the states where they did not address these issues because if it's if it's not addressed about who takes over the business when when the key person passes away, then it creates ultimately something that's probably going to go through probate and cost a lot of time, cost a lot of problems. You know, even with the day to day, if it's a company that has employees, they might not know who's who's in charge, who's going to get them their next paycheck. And there's a lot of businesses that are really terribly impacted by this kind of thing. Um, so this kind of fits into the succession planning things that some businesses do, but you know, it's, it's important that we sit down and the, for the folks that have these types of businesses that we address what happens with it. Cause like I said, most of these documents are silent and a person passes away and there is no direction about who owns the business. And ultimately it becomes an asset that has to go through probate. And of these type of uh, situations where you have company stock inside uh, um, or connected often, and they're usually connected, the ones you're talking about, connected with the employer they're with? Yeah, well, a lot of times it's somebody's own business. So, you know, a person may have a, a small company that they've started up an LLC for. It may be somebody who's just got a couple of rental properties that they put in an LLC. But a lot of a lot of the documents that are created sometimes folks literally just go to the so it's the uh, secretary of state's website and just fill in the the forms on there and pay the hundred dollars and they have an llc and that's all they do right um a lot of other documents they you know sometimes they'll go through a, a 
company or with an attorney and set up and have operating agreements and those types of things. But oftentimes they're silent as to what happens to the company or that that ownership when the person passes away. It's it's important to address whether it's in an operating agreement or a partnership agreement that the ownership of the of the company would pass to a spouse or what we like to do is when folks have a trust already in place that the trustee of the trust would automatically step in to that owner's role in the company and that it would be a seamless transition so that if you've got you know a, a spouse as a trustee or one of your children or a you know trusted advisor as a as your trustee that they can just step in to that business and determine okay well what needs to be done to either keep this business operating do we need to wrap up the business what happens at this point now i i realize the next person is the tax person but a question i can ask you um is it possible that you would have retirement or you could have retirement uh, funds the these stocks in other words could be actually tax qualified retirement or it's possible they could have stocks in there that are not tied to retirement they're just regular uh, brokerage account type um, stocks well these the, the i'm not necessarily talking about like stock in a, in a publicly traded company this is more for just a private business or something like that so so it's it's something's going to have a different different tax effect on it i mean there's it, it would be the same tax effect whether it's the person holding it individually or holding it through it through a trust or the trust takes it um but it, a lot of it depends on the the values of the business and and that type of thing and if it's if it's sold there would be potentially a profit realized if it's not sold um, a lot of these businesses, like I said, it, it may be one person owns it, but they've got, you know, 15 companies working down at the warehouse or whatever that that they need to make sure that those people are, are able to stay employed and that somebody, you know, whether they sell the business, whether the, the trust takes over the operation of the business, they need to make sure that, that the business is taken care of and these folks are making sure they get their paycheck too. Uh, so it's it's important to do these things. That's one of the things with Eidelman Law Firm that we address as part of an overall uh, picture of somebody's, uh, you know, estate planning and, and their overall financial situation when they meet with the advisors. Um, a lot of times a, a small business is a big part of a person's net worth though. And it's something that absolutely has to be addressed before it winds up in probate and literally can cost folks, you know, tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to take these types of assets through probate. Yeah, and you know, people people are so thankful when they are able to get the information that is accurate. Uh, that's why I like to say that if by having the whole team, yourself included, uh, then tax people, Medicare, you can make informed decisions when you have the whole team and informed to see decisions lead to confidence. And so, um, you know, I, I just think having someone like yourself that can come in and address these matters, it's vitally important. Sometimes we're faced with decisions or problems that just seem too big. We get paralyzed and end up doing nothing for weeks or months on end while we try and figure out what to do. It can help to have someone to talk to about these decisions. And when it comes to retirement, sometimes all it takes is a 15 minute phone call to find the right path to go down. If you'd like to set up that 15 minute introductory phone call, reach out right now at 833-MAG-REPORT. That's 833-MAG-REPORT. Or go over to our website, retirehour.com, there you can watch past episodes, submit a question, or schedule that 15-minute call with Market Advisory Group team. We'll be right back. Market Tax Services knows retirement is the promise you have spent your working career to fulfill. But are those savings in danger from unexpected taxes? That's where the team at Market Tax Services comes into play. We meet and help people just like you every day. The best part? 
Our team of in-house CPAs and tax professionals not only assist with tax savings, but tax planning as well. Call Market Tax Services at 833-2-TAX-PLAN or visit markettaxservices.com. Welcome back into Retire Hour to round out the show. We like to liven it up with everyone's favorite subject, taxes. <laughs> with me in studio, it's not Joshua, uh, Joshua Sikora this time. We have Tiffany Rayer, a uh, tax advisor with Market Tax Services. Tiffany, taxes are something that most people get in the habit of doing themselves every year. But when it comes to something more complex like retirement accounts, people can get in over their heads very quickly, can't they? They can. Um, I think it's fair to say that we all try the best we can to manage our resources. And um, sometimes that involves taking risks that we might not know the full implication of. And sometimes we find out too late that it wasn't the, it didn't pan out the way that we expected it to. Um, I'd like to talk about one client mm -hmm. that I recently met with. He's a new client of ours. He came to us a year after he had a job change. And when he left his old company, he had a fair amount of money in his 401k. And so he decided to, not knowing what the future held, he withdrew that in the form of a lump sum. He met with his tax or his financial advisor who advised him to hold 10% and he was in the 12% tax bracket. So that was a fair, you know, fair decision. He left that conversation feeling good about it and felt like he knew what to expect at, at year end. Um, but yeah, unfortunately. There was more to the story, wasn't there? Right. Um, he, he actually, I, I, there's even, I know some, sometimes when we get in a situation where we're kind of in a hard spot, it, it can be also tempting to take out a loan from our 401 case. Mm -hmm. Is, is that something yeah. that you've dealt with? And Sure, that comes up uh, from time to time. And um, I say this, uh, I've said this a number of times uh, on Retire Hour. I'll say it again. Um, I've yet to meet the person who took, uh, the, who, who took a loan from their 401k and um, they didn't in some way regret it. Now, does that mean that, that no one should ever do it? It's not, no. Um, that's not a blanket statement that, sh that should be made. But um, it's not as rosy of a picture as whoever suggested it to them uh, might have portrayed it. Right. I think it's really important before you make decisions when you're taking out um, any form of, of money out of your 401k to meet with the financial advisor and the tax consultant because then you can get the full picture of how that might affect your income stream going forward. Um, in Ted's case, he actually ended up getting a great job uh, not too long after where he was making considerably more money. And when at year end, when it was time to file his taxes, he actually got hit with kind of a surprise because his new income plus the distribution that he had taken out threw him into the 22% tax bracket. Ouch. Well, he also didn't account for the 10% penalty since he's only 49. Oh, yeah. Oh my. So he had to pay an additional 12%, additional 10%. And he was pretty frustrated by the whole situation. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's an experience like that that um, can really sour someone on just, you know, it, once they get to retirement, they're still thinking about that. Right. They're We're still saving angry. for a rainy day. And yeah. we want to we make informed decisions. And we rely on, on sometimes just one conversation. But... You know, not everybody has the time to go through every bit of their, you know, what the ramifications are when they make decisions in their 401k. So um, I think it's really important to have a, a whole team behind you. Yeah. Now, um, in, in his case, was there anything to, to help soften the blow or... Well, he did meet with our finance team, and um, he was able to feel 
secure going forward with his financial decisions. There was nothing we could really do about the the prior year, but now he has um, a more of a forecasted idea of how of what portion of his 401k is taxable should he take out distributions in the future or once he hits the age of RMDs. Um, he he knows more what to expect, so he feels more secure in his knowledge and kind of a better idea going forward. And the tax planning sessions really help because then he knows what to expect at year end and if there's anything to mitigate the tax liability. I'm glad you brought that up, actually, that that um, it is very important to do tax planning because then you're making decisions before the calendar year runs out and mm -hmm. it's too late. So A lot of people don't take advantage of that, and they should. That's true. All right. Tiffany, she knows what she's talking about. It takes a team for proper retirement planning. There are just too many cracks for your money to fall into if you aren't getting advice on investments, taxes, Medicare, estate planning, all at the same table. If you're missing something uh, in your retirement plan, you can set up a 15-minute introductory phone call with Market Advisory Group to see how we could help. To do so, just reach out at 833 MAG Report. That's 833 MAG Report. And uh, an even better way is to go over to the website, retirehour.com. The reason I say it's better is you can watch some episodes while you're there and then even uh, start the 15 minute phone call by scheduling it. I'm Larry Clefcorn, thanking you for tuning in to Retire Hour. We will see you next week. Unless otherwise indicated, all client and prospect names mentioned on this show have been changed to protect the identities of the individuals discussed. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. The content provided is intended for informational and educational purposes only. The views, statements, and opinions expressed herein are those of the individual speakers and not necessarily those of Foundations and its affiliates. The information contained herein does not constitute an offer to sell any securities or represent an express or implied opinion or endorsement of any specific investment opportunity, offering, or issuer. Any discussion of performance or returns are not indicative of future results. Each individual investor situation is different and any ideas provided may not be appropriate for your particular circumstances. Foundations only transacts business in the states where it is registered or excluded or exempt from registration requirements. Registration as an investment advisor is not an endorsement of the firm by security regulators and does not mean the advisor has achieved a specific level of skill or ability. No legal or tax advice is provided. Always consult with a tax professional. Legal services are offered by Eidelman Law Firm. Tax services offered by Market Tax Services. Market Advisory Group does not provide legal or tax advice. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not in any way refer to investment advisory products. Rates and guarantees provided by insurance products and annuities are subject to the financial strength of the issuing insurance company, not guaranteed by any bank or the FDIC. The guest commentators featured in this show are not investment advisor representatives of foundations and do not provide advisory services. Market Advisory Group does have several investment advisor representatives that can provide such services. This is not endorsed or affiliated with any U.S. government agency, the Social Security Administration, or associated with any federal Medicare program. We do not offer every plan available in your area. Any information we provide is limited to those plans we do offer in your area. Please contact Medicare.gov or 1-800-MEDICARE to get information on all of your options. A Roth conversion may not be suitable for your situation. The primary goal in converting retirement assets into a Roth IRA is to reduce the future tax liability on the distributions you take in retirement or on the distributions of your beneficiaries. The information provided is to help you determine whether or not a Roth IRA conversion may be appropriate for your particular circumstances. Please review your retirement savings, tax, and legacy planning strategies with your legal slash tax advisor to be sure a Roth IRA conversion fits into your planning strategies. All rights reserved.